it's because he started doing positive for the community. He started showing that he actually had power, that he wasn't just one of a monolithic voice, but he could wrap people around. So there's theories that there's infinite amounts of universe and there's alternate universe. So it's very important for me to get Hoover out because in an alternate universe, I am him. And I have to go and get him free because he was doing positive inside of Chicago, just like how I'm moving back to Chicago. And it's not just about, you know, getting on stage and being an entertainer and having a monolithic voice that's for, forced to be a specific party. You know, people expect that if you're black, you have to be Democrat. I have a, uh, I've, I've had conversations that basically said that welfare is the reason why a lot of black people end up being Democrat. They say, you know, first of all, it, it, it's a, a limit to amount of jobs. Uh, so the, the fathers lose the jobs and they say, we'll give you more money for having more kids in your home. And then we got rid of the mental health institutes in the 80s and the 90s and the prison rates just shot up. And now you have Chirac, what people call Chirac, which is actually our uh, murder rate is going down by 20% every year. I just talked to the superintendent, met with Michael Sachs, that's Ron, Ron's uh, right hand man. So uh, I think it's the bravery that helps you beat this game called life. You know, they tried to scare me to not wear this hat, my own friends, but this hat, it gives me, it gives me power in a way. You know, my dad and my mom separated, so I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home. And also, uh, I'm married to a family that, um, you know, <laughs> not a lot of male energy going on. It's beautiful though, but there's times where, you know, it's something about, you know, I love Hillary, I love everyone, right? But the campaign, I'm with her, just didn't make me feel as a guy that didn't get to see my dad all the time, like a guy that could play catch with his son. It was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman, that was, that's my favorite superhero. And you made a Superman cape for me also as a guy that looks up to you, looks up to Ralph Lauren, looks up to American industry guys. Non-political, no bullshit, put the beep on it, however you want to do it, five seconds delay, and just goes in and gets it done. Right now, you gave me the heart to go to Adidas because at Adidas, when I went in, in 2015, we were a $14 billion company losing $2 billion a year. Now we have a $38 billion market cap. It's called the Yeezy effect. And I went to Casper, we had a meeting in Chicago, and I said, you have to bring manufacturing on shore, in, not even shore, into the core. It's not about the borders, the core of Adidas, and Chicago is the core of middle America. We have to make middle America strong. So I had the balls, because I had enough balls to put on this hat. I, I mean, this Adidas thing made me a billionaire, and I could have lost $200 million walking away from that deal. But even with that, I knew it was more important for me to take the chance of walking away from that deal than to have no fathers in Chicago with no homes. And when we do have prison reformation for no, because it's, uh, uh, it's habilitation, not rehabilitation, because we didn't have the abilities in the first place. We never had anyone to taught us. We didn't teach us. Exactly. We had no one to taught us. Right. So um, uh, it's more important than any specific deal, any, anything that we bring jobs into America and that we provide a transition with mental health and the American um, uh, education curriculum that a gym has worked on. Larry Hooper also has a curriculum that he's worked on. We have Montessori curriculums that we worked on. WeWorks has a beautiful curriculum. The Waldorf um, establishment has a curriculum. Uh, we have meditation. There's a lot of things affecting our mental health that makes us do crazy things that puts us back into that trap door called the 13th Amendment. I did say abolish with the hat on because why would you keep something around that's a trap door? If you're building a floor, the Constitution is the base of our, of our industry, right, of, of, our, of our country, of our company. Would you build a trap door that if you mess up and you accidentally something happens, you fall and you end up next to the Unabomber? You end up, you got to remove all that trap door out of the relationship. The four gentlemen that wrote the 13th Amendment, um, and I think the way the universe works, it's perfect. We don't have 13 floors, do we? You know, so the four, uh, the four gentlemen that wrote the 13th Amendment didn't look like the people they were amending. Also, at that point, it was illegal for blacks to read or African-Americans 
to read. Um, and so that meant if you actually read the amendment, you'd get locked up and turned to a slave. Again, so what I think is we don't need sentences, we need pardons. We need to talk to people. Uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL. And he, he looked at my brain, it's equal on three parts. I'm gonna go ahead, drop some bombs for you. 98 percentile IQ test. I had a 75 percentile of all human beings, but it was counting eight numbers backwards after it was repeating, so I'm gonna work on that one. The other one's 98 percent Tesla Freud. You know, so um, he said that I actually wasn't bipolar. I had sleep deprivation, which could cause dementia 10 to 20 years from now where I wouldn't even remember my son's name. So all this power that I got and I'm taking my son to the Sox game and all that, I wouldn't be able to remember his name from a misdiagnosis. And what we need is we can empower the pharmaceuticals. And, and make more money. That's one thing. I've never stepped into a situation where I didn't make people more money. So we can empower pharmaceuticals. We can empower our industries. We can empower our factories. We can bring not only Adidas on shore, we can bring Foxconn to set up a factory in, I think, Minnesota. 53,000. Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. They have 4,000 jobs, people making $53,000 a year. And one of the things we got to set is Ford to have the highest design, the dopest cars, the most amazing. I don't really say dope, I don't say negative words and try to flip them. We just say positive, lovely, divine, universal words. So the flyest, freshest, most amazing car. And what we wanna start with is, uh, I, 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 brought a, I brought a gift with me right here. Um, this right here is the iPlane One. It's a hydrogen-powered uh, airplane, and this is what our president should be flying in. Look at this jerk. Let's <laughs> get rid of Air Force One. Can we get rid of Air Force One? No, you don't like that. Well, well we're going to have Apple, yeah, an American company, work on this plane with. But you know what I don't like about, it's not that I don't like, what I, what I need Saturday Night Live to improve on or what I need the liberals to improve on is, if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories, and we have to make our core be in power. We have to bring jobs into America because our best export is entertainment and ideas, but when we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. I'll tell you what, that was pretty impressive, folks. <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, Jim. Do you want to say something? <laughs> what do you do after that? Uh, you like me to say one word? Please, yeah. please. If he doesn't look good, we don't look good. Yeah. Great, right? That's yeah. right. Isn't that a great statement? Yes, it is. And it's so true. It makes a lot of sense. As a country. It's yeah, so as a country. Very I've never seen Jim Brown impressed before. He was impressed. That's true. That statement is amazing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to tell you, it's great to have you guys with us. And uh, we're going to go in. We're going to have some lunch. Uh, that was quite something. That was quite something. That was from the soul. Yeah, challenged. Can I just ask a quick question? Really, really interesting. Yes, yeah, please. So you, you had said of, of President Bush that he doesn't care about black people. And you, you've heard some people say that about this president. What do you, how do you respond to that? What do you make of that? I think we need to care about all people. And I believe that when I went on to NBC, I was very emotional and I was programmed to think from a victimized mentality, a, a, a welfare mentality. I think that with, with <clears throat> blacks and African Americans, we really get caught up in the idea of racism over the idea of industry. We say if people don't have land, they settle for brands. We want uh, polo sport and Obama again. We want a brand more than we want land because we haven't known how it feels to actually have our own land and have ownership of our own blocks. So when you don't have ownership, then it's all about how something looks. It's about the patina, it's not about the soil, it's not about the core. So we focus more on 
Did somebody wearing something? Did someone disrespect me so I gotta, I gotta shoot them? Or the idea of someone being racist. You know, we talk about uh, police uh, uh, murders, which we definitely have to discuss and we have to uh, bring nobility to the, to the police officers and make them, because police officers are just like us. But this is this whole hate building, right? And that's a, a major thing about racial tension. And we also, as black people, we have to take a responsibility for what we're doing. We kill each other more than uh, police officers. And that's not saying that the police officer is not an issue because they are in a place, a position of power. Uh, but sometimes they're in placement of law enforcement. They need to be law power. It's force versus power. When you have, you shouldn't have to force people to do that. So a lot of times a police officer is sitting there, they're being forced to do this and forced to do that block and then they force somebody into something and force something. We have to release the love throughout the entire country and give opportunities. A lot of times it's just the overall lack of reparations that we, at any given point, we say, oh, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist. So we don't have the reparations, but we have the 13th Amendment. We gotta open up the whole conversation. So, and uh, that's a move, one of the moves that I love that liberals try to do, the liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me. That's an invisible wall. That's, that's, but you don't think you, you, you reject oh, saying he's racist. You, you have one question, we can go to another question. Okay. I answered your question. I don't answer questions in simple sound, sound bites. You, you are tasting a fine wine that has multiple <laughs> notes to it. You better play 4D chess with me like it's Minority Report. Because it ain't that simple. It's complex. Mr. President, would <laughs> from the Chicago Sun-Times, so I would like to know what you would like to ask President Trump to do for Chicago. You're here to talk about crime in Chicago. The, the thing that, um, that the uh, head of the police and um, Mike Sachs met with me last night at the Soho House about was we feel that stop and frisk uh, does not help the relationships in the city. And everyone that knew I was coming here said ask about stop and frisk. That's, that's, that's uh, the number one thing that we're uh, having this conversation about. Uh, another thing is opening up industries and we've got to get some tax breaks to because you know we're making, um, we got a speed factory in Atlanta but the shoes are costing us $300 so it's costing us too, too much to make things so we need some prototypes here so we can get people back working so China can't just beat us and Vietnam can't beat us. You got Levi's, the greatest jeans company in the world making their jeans in, uh, in Vietnam. So we're gonna to need to get a few breaks to be able to have some places in my hometown of Chicago and the 2.7 million to the 9 million surrounding suburbs where we can create some factories. Now I think it would be cool for them to be Trump factories because he's a master of industry, he's a builder. And I think it would be cool to have Yeezy ideation centers which would be a mix of education that empowers people and gives them modern information. Like sometimes people say, this kid has ADD, this kid has ADD. He don't have ADD, school is boring. It was boring, it's not as exciting as this. We have to make it more exciting, we have to mix curriculums. You play basketball while you're doing math. You, you, you learn about music while you meditate in the morning. We have to instate mental health and art programs uh, back, into the, uh, back into the city. So those are, uh, and also, Larry Hoover is an example of a man that was turning his life around and as soon as he tried to turn his life around, they hit him with six life sentences. So I believe he's, with, you say don't tear down the statues, Larry Hoover is a living statue. He's a beacon for us that needs to see his family, that needs to go out and represent. When you have a block leader on every single block, they can own the block as their own. That's something I learned from Jim Brown from America I Can. We need to put curriculums from people who really came from the streets, not people who are just trying to set us up to go into a work system or prison system that applies to what people are really going through, which Jim Brown has created. What about gun violence with all the debate about the Second Amendment going on? The How problem you, is illegal guns. Illegal guns is the problem. Not, not, not legal guns. We have the right to bear arms. President Trump has said that he favors stop and frisk. 
risk. Are you guys going to be discussing that? Do you think you can change the mind? Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to discuss that. I didn't mean to put you no, on no, blast okay. like that, bro, yeah. but it's definitely... Hey, I'm uh, open-minded. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mr. President, would you like him to speak at one of your rallies? He can speak for me anytime he wants. He's been a great guy. He's a smart cookie. Yeah. Smart. He gets it. Yeah. These two guys, Jim Brown, he's been doing this for a long time. Is this a future presidential candidate? Uh, could very well be. Oh, only after. Could that. very well be. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. We, we, we have a good... And the thing is, let's stop worrying about the future. All we really have is today. We just have today. Over and over and over again, the eternal return, the hero's journey. And Trump is on his hero's journey right now. And he might not have expected to have a crazy motherfucker like Kanye West run up and uh, support. But best believe we are going to make America great. Now, the thing is, my, another thing is black people have an issue with the word again. And I believe my feeling from that is because I'm going to throw I'm going to go all the way Sigma with it because time is a myth. All we have is now. All we have is today. So the word again, it doesn't hurt us because of the idea of racism and slavery and the different things. It, it, it hurts us because we need to focus on who we are now, today. I believe. So I actually brought some hats in that have a bit of a transition. I'm not, not trying to put you up there in the spot a little bit. Uh, I made a hat uh, that says Make America Great. Just that. But I would love to see at the Super Bowl Trump wearing the Make America Great hat, Colin making, wearing the Make America Great and showing that we can bend a bit on this side, we can bend a bit on this side, and we can learn how to be malleable in the infinite universe that we are and the loving beings that we are, that we don't have to stick to all traditions. And we aren't a side. We are one unit. We are one country. We are one moment in history and time. We might have been here before, but right now we're here together. And the greatest value that people have are other people. And we need to stop working on red and blue. It's like a gang again. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. You're in the Oval Office. Okay. How does it feel to be in the Oval Office? Oh, it is good energy in this. Isn't it good energy? Yeah. It's good energy. It's a great place. Jim, how do you feel? I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I truly feel good. I yeah. thank you, too. You're so respected. And what Kanye's doing has been incredible. All over the world, they're talking about this. And I have to tell you, I had important meetings today with senators and with mm -hmm. everything. Nobody cared. They wanted this meeting. This is the meeting. Is that right? I can say that to John. Uh, no, the others were good, right? But this is what they want. Well, it's my honor, Jim. I want to tell you, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Long time. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. No athlete like you. Well, you know why I'm here? I'm here to serve. I'm not here to ask for anything. I'm here to... Contribute. You know, that's always been the way Jim has been for a long time. And he just wanted to help, and it's it's something special. Jennifer, did you have a question? Um, I guess just do you what do you feel about stop and frisk? Are you gonna have Well we're gonna look at it. I'm I'm open to everything. Hey look, I think it's a shame what's happening in Chicago. And what else can be done? I'm in Chicago a lot too. I have nice things in Chicago. You know that, right? And I hate to see what's happening. They're having Numbers, the numbers of people being shot and killed, and it's, it's, not, it's not for this country. So they have to do something, and I am totally open. If we can do it a different way, Kanye, I'm totally open. Yes, but yes. they have to do, I mean, we all agree they have to do something. That's Mr. for President, sure. Is it a law enforcement issue, a legislation? Well, maybe it's a combination of both. I, I guess it is, but I think it's probably a combination of both. And it's also a respect issue. They respect this guy. They respect this guy. That's a big thing. Right now, they're not respecting, let's say, your mayor or let's say your leadership in Chicago. But certainly, it shouldn't be happening. What's going on there should not be happening. Steve, go ahead. Uh, honestly, from our standpoint, this was just set up to be a lunch of two people that I like. And I guess they like me. And we're going to have lunch. We're going to talk. You said, you said, I guess you know I love you. I know. Did, did I, did but I don't want to take, I don't want to put you in that spot. But. No, I'm, I'm standing in that spot. I love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. That's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
whether you like it, whether you don't like it, they're special people. And I appreciate it. Jim, Kanye, I appreciate it. So let's go have some lunch. Okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all very much. Great,